Welcome to the Bible study. This week we are on lesson 2, Slaying the Giant of Discouragement. It is based on the book of Nehemiah chapter 4. We learn how to recognize and respond to discouragement. The prefix dis suggests that discouragement is the absence of courage. To be discouraged means not to approach life with courage, to lose sight of the victory that is ours. Looking at life from God's perspective helps to regain our courage for living. The Bible is filled with stories about real people facing real challenges, people like you and me. Thankfully, God directed the writing down of stories that we can relate to right where we live. Stories like Nehemiah give us hope that while discouragement may come our way, we do not have to live with it. we can learn to overcome the giant of discouragement here's the setting for what the bible tells us of the life of nehemiah he was a royal cupbearer who was appointed governor of jerusalem to oversee the restoration of the great city and especially of its walls 70 years earlier israel had been conquered by babylon and taken into captivity then babylon was conquered by persia The Persian king Cyrus gave the Jewish captives permission to return to their own land and rebuild it. First to return was Jerubbabel, who led a group to begin rebuilding the temple. Next came a priest by the name of Ezra and an administrator named Nehemiah. As a priest, Ezra set about to build up the hearts of the returned captives, while Nehemiah focused on rebuilding Jerusalem's walls. By the time we get to Nehemiah chapter 4 we find that Nehemiah has organized the people into efficient crews of laborers who are hard at work on the walls they were about half way finished rebuilding the walls when opposition to the project surfaced two leaders in particular Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite people who had exercised some control in the land in the Israelites absence rose up against Nehemiah and his project they did everything in their power to discourage Nehemiah to cause him to abandon his task they didn't want the israelites to be reestablished in the land and regain their former power and glory any time you're halfway through a project you are a prime candidate for discouragement you're tired from what you have done and wondering if the end is actually attainable when the people began to hear tobiah and sanballat's words and warnings directed towards nehemiah they began to grow discouraged as well what was nehemiah to do how did he defeat discouragement in his own life and keep hundreds and hundreds of his fellow israelites from throwing up their hands in despair as well the lessons we learn from the life of nehemiah will keep us from giving in to the giant of discouragement by the end of this lesson we will learn from nehemiah how to guard our own heart and mind we will learn how to stay encouraged firstly we need to recognize discouragement recognizing what makes us vulnerable to discouragement is the best way to keep it at a distance discouragement factor number 1 is fatigue in verse 10 of nehemiah chapter 4 we learn that the strength of the laborers was failing because we know the wall was finished in 52 days nehemiah chapter 6 verse 15 they must have been working non-stop for nearly a month when the opposition surfaced 25 or 30 days of hard work with little rest would have left the entire workforce fatigued someone has said that fatigue makes cowards of us all the author pastor jeremiah says he has seen it happen to him perhaps you have as well just as i have We are absolutely more vulnerable to discouragement when we are tired. 
he says he had to acknowledge that as he's gotten older that he simply can't push himself as hard as he once could and when he tries to he quickly becomes unproductive he's recognized that his basic personality type to do more accomplish more is probably not going to change at this point but what he's learned to change is the way he works when he's working he still works hard as we all should but he's learned to take time to rest and recuperate instead of those breaks keeping him from accomplishing work they actually enable him to do more in the long run it's a matter of living life like a marathon instead of a sprint as a result he finds he keeps the giant of discouragement from interfering with accomplishing his goals discouragement factor number 2 frustration not only was the strength of the workers failing but there was so much rubbish in the way from the prior walls destruction that they could hardly work you can imagine the scene huge piles of stone blocks piled everywhere from when the babylonians had knocked down the walls to capture the city Sometimes laying the foundation for a project can be the most frustrating part while it's perhaps the most important part it's not nearly as much fun to clear the site and get ready to build as it is to see the walls rising moving the mountains of debris could easily have produced mountains of frustration there are three ways to live life live out wear out or burn out While I hope to live out as you probably do too some people think burning out is more spiritual but it is not people get burnt out because they work hard without focus purpose or accomplishment the author says he knows people who work incredibly hard all the time but they never burn out because they are reaching the goals and living with a tremendous sense of accomplishment burning out comes from trying to accomplish something that is unattainable or at least appears that way from where you stand trying to build a wall on top of piles of rubble could easily lead to burnout burnout could be synonymous with frustration and frustration is an early warning sign for the onset of discouragement It's easy for people who are tired and frustrated to conclude they are going to fail. Discouragement factor number 3, failure. Finally in verse 10 we see the potential for failure that had set in. We are not able to build the wall. It's easy to see why they would think they might fail being exhausted and hemmed in by rubble on every side when they were just halfway done. You can imagine the workers beginning to talk among themselves as they worked fueling the fires of failure with the discouraging and frustrating words failure itself is a giant which all of us face at some point in our lives we have to remember that we are in a fallen world and failure is part of life failing is not the issue but what we do when we fail is how we respond to failure as well as how we respond to exhaustion and frustration is what makes the difference regarding discouragement if when we fail we allow the final stepping stone to discouragement that is fear to be laid we have made a way for this giant to walk right in discouragement factor number 4 fear In verses 11 and 12 those working on the walls got word of the adversary's plans they mean to put the Jews to death those who opposed the rebuilding of the walls were coming in among the Israelites and whispering in their ears we are going to get you we shouldn't be surprised at that uh, sort of tactic resulting in fear Relentless criticism from one's enemies can begin to take its toll over time. Occasionally the author receives a critical letter from someone who has heard him speak or read something he's written. 
It seems that those letters arrive at the most inappropriate time. You may be struggling already and you open the mail and discover someone is out to get you. Not literally, but with words. And you start believing the criticism, wondering if you ought even to continue the work you're trying to accomplish. Criticism, that is threats in Nehemiah's case, can lead to fear. And fear can definitely lead to discouragement. So how do we respond when we are tired, frustrated, on the verge of failure and fearful about the future? How do we keep from getting stuck in the slough of discouragement? How do we respond to discouragement? Let's follow the order of events in Nehemiah chapter 4 to see how Nehemiah handled the pending possibility of serious discouragement. Cry out to God. The first thing he did, which is often the last thing we do, was to cry out to God. How often we find ourselves saying we have nothing left to do but pray. Instead of ending up praying, we ought to begin by praying. The first place to begin when discouragement sets in is in prayer and to ask God to intervene in the issue at hand. The author says, Often, when he's on the verge of discouragement, he will sit down at his computer or with his journal and write out his uh, thoughts to the Lord as a prayer, writing out his concerns, helps identify and crystallize the issues, helps him to focus and prioritize what has become a swirl of conflicting thoughts and feelings. But in the process of writing, he's also crying out to God the Lord that is always the place to begin. Next, he turns to the Psalms of the Old Testament and encourages us to do as well. We can think of the Psalms as the journal entries of David and the other Psalmists. We get to peek into their journals and read the most intimate thoughts when they were going through times of discouragement. They become come our mentors, our teachers in learning how to cry out to God when we are discouraged. Continue the work God has given you to do. Next in verse 6 we find that they kept working in spite of the looming opposition. It is so easy to throw in the towel when we get discouraged. We want to rid ourselves of what we think is causing the frustration, discouragement. Ironically, by giving up, we separate ourselves from the one thing that can help us overcome discouragement, achieving what we set out to do. When discouraging and accusing words come against Nehemiah, he continued doing exactly what he was doing before the attack started. He didn't let the opposition keep him from accomplishing what he set out to do. On one occasion, Nehemiah's enemies tried to entice Nehemiah to come down off the wall and meet with him in conference. I love Nehemiah's response. He replied to his enemies that he wasn't about to leave the great work he was doing and waste time meeting with them. What was he saying? He was sending a message of commitment and determination to finish what he knew God had called him to do. The author says, The longer he lives, the more he realizes that when he feels least like doing something, that is the time he most needs to do it. Whether it's praying, exercising, resting, reading the Bible, whatever it is, there will always be times when we won't feel encouraged about the prospects of that activity being beneficial. But it will be, and we need to do it most at the time we feel least like doing it. Concentrate on the big picture. Nehemiah rallies the workers to continue their work in light of a bigger picture. They weren't just stacking blocks, nor were they just building a little section of a wall. Rather, they were building a huge wall that would enclose the city of Jerusalem and protect them and their families from those seeking to do them harm. Sometimes working in our little corner of the kingdom, it's easy to get discouraged. We wonder if what we are doing is making any difference or whether it's worth the trouble to continue on. 
Nehemiah's workers were in danger of isolation, not being able to see around the pile of rubble between them and the next group of workers further down the line. So Nehemiah positions the workers so they could see better, could keep in touch with one another and could remain encouraged in the work. Discouragement often comes when we lose sight of the big picture. We need to stay connected to a larger community of faith so we don't lose heart. Leith Anderson in his 1999 book Leadership That Works helps Christian leaders in the same way. He cites pages after pages of highly encouraging facts and statistics about the progress of the gospel around the world and in America. Many people don't realize that at this point more people attended church in America each week than attended major sporting events in a year. They also don't realize that there were nearly twice as many people in their 20s in church each Sunday than in their 70s. Numbers may be different now, but the church is still making an impact today. that encourages us to stay focused on the big picture claim the encouragement of god's promise in verse 14 nehemiah challenges the people to not be afraid of their enemies remember the lord great and awesome the promises of god are the bedrock of our faith When we are toying with discouragement and entertaining things in our mind that are not true, we need nothing more than the truth from God, and his word is where we go to find it. Take your Bible out, plant yourself in a chair and start reading out loud if necessary. The author says sometimes he purposes before God to keep reading his word until he comes and speaks to his heart in a way that helps him see through his discouragement and he always does the word of god tells us not to get discouraged in the midst of the good we are doing galatians chapter 6 verse 9 taking an admonition like that to heart consistently is a powerful antidote to discouragement in life and ministry carry somebody else's burden finally nehemiah chapter 4 verses 16 to 23 we find something very interesting taking place people helping people some people were carrying some were guarding some were building and all with swords strapped on they even stayed up all night to continue the work what happens in that kind of environment teamwork camaraderie and community develop when we work together the sharing of tasks keeps us dependent on one another it's easier to do your part of a task than to try to do the whole thing by yourself it's also much easier for synergy to occur creating something bigger than the sum of its parts when everyone works together the author says Many have been the times when he was lifted out of discouragement by getting involved in helping someone else. When he focused on others, he stopped focusing on himself, and he discovered in the process that others relieved the discouragement by reaching out to him. We reap what we sow. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. And sowing encouragement into others' lives means we will reap it ourselves in time we live in potentially discouraging days but arresting discouragement before it even gets on the property of our heart and mind will keep it from taking over and stopping the work god is doing in and through us grace and peace to all under the influence of my voice I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health as you prosper in his word. Shalom.